Welcome everyone, Farmer Cop here. I have a special treat for you. We're going to talk about a very cool organization called the Farmers Only Club. So uh, here with me, I have Drew and Phil. Hey guys, I'm Drew, the community manager over at uh, FOC. Oh, I'm from Phil, by the way. Uh, so can you guys tell me just a little bit about uh, what is FOC, the Farmers Only Club? What, why did you guys make it? Yeah, so FOC is a private FS19 community uh, will eventually be serving FS22, but our goal is to create as much of an interactive multiplayer experience as possible. Uh, just add some things to multiplayer for the farm sim community that the base game doesn't really allow for. That's awesome. Yeah, I see. I haven't. I've had a lot of. I mean, as you can imagine, I've had a lot of people ask me to join their multiplayer stuff and their different groups and organizations and stuff. And I don't have a ton of time to play multiplayer, anyways. But I think that your guys's group, the Farmers Only Club or the FOC, has been one of the most in depth and one of the cooler ones for sure with everything you guys have going on. And the more I find out about it, the more I'm like, wow, that's pretty cool. But uh, uh, anyhow, another question: um, uh, How do people join you guys? How how do they get a part of this? And then another question: I'm sure of kind of a follow up is. As good as this sounds, is this free or is there some sort of surcharge or monthly fee? Is there any fees associated, I guess, is what I would ask. No, it's completely free. Like Phil said, we host all of our own hardware so we can save by buying these bare metal servers and uh, kind of running them efficiently with our secret sauce he mentioned. Uh, all we have is a Patreon uh, that's completely optional, just helps support some of the running costs, but we don't sell any in-game progression. We don't sell tractors. We don't give away money. Uh, we don't give away land. You can't buy anything in game. It's been really important from the get go that this is an economy based server. Uh, everything has to focus on that economy, make it so it's balanced. Eventually, we'd like to introduce some leaderboards so your progression means something. This is a perpetual environment. So if we sold in game assets for real life money, we'd basically be ruining that experience, taking away the, the work that players have put into their farms. And we think that would hurt the longevity in the long run for what we'd like to do. That does make sense. That's super cool. Um, and by the way, you guys watching now, um, if you guys do want to join them or you guys want to join them on Patreon as well to go support it because you think it's super awesome, um, those links will be down below in the description of this video. So feel free to check those out. Uh, do you guys have any specific plans for how you're going to transition to FS22 when it comes out uh, later this year? Are you going to keep, I guess another question I have with that is, are you going to keep some servers FS19 while people make that transition, or are you just going to jump them all over to FS22? Yeah, so we have about 25 servers for FS19 right now, and our goal is definitely to transition to FS22 when the time's right. Obviously, we're going to be waiting for a lot of maps and mods to come out. We'll have to wait for the modding community to develop those things so we have enough to transition to. But once the content's there, I'm sure we'll uh, switch over to FS22. It'll kind of be a separate economy. We're not planning on keeping the 19 progression with 22. It'll be a blank slate. Hopefully by then we've grown up, have a larger player base, and it can be more of like a hit-the-ground-running competitive start, but also for fun. Just want to make sure there's enough maps there. That's awesome. That's cool. Um, and I guess, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, so are is every single one of your servers a different map, or do you have some that are doubled up? Yeah, so we have 23 maps and then a couple utility servers that serve functions for the whole group that we can talk about later. But as far as uh, doubled up maps, yeah, eventually there's going to be some double dipping. I think we have, of the 23 servers, 20 unique maps. So we still try to make everything a 4x map. We love it when people choose unique servers. Uh, we don't like doubling up maps, but totally okay. I mean, eventually we'll outgrow it. If we have eight slots per server for players to play on, everybody gets their own farm. It's inevitable. That's awesome. That's super cool. Going off of that a little bit, talking about the different maps, can someone play on multiple servers? And how do they kind of go about doing that if they want to play on multiple ones? Yeah, so I don't think we actually talked about exactly what um, what what's possible, right? So um, with the bot, you can use you can move money instantaneously, and that means like you can move it between servers uh, without having to wait for your staff to to come in and move the money for you. Uh, you can move uh, vehicles instantaneously, and um, those retain all their you know stats like uh, engine hours, even the amount of gas side of it. Um, but basically, the, the goal is for uh, your experience to be seamless between the, the servers and for the servers to essentially be an even playing ground for everyone. 
Um, so with that, um, you are able to, to switch between servers. You are able to play on multiple servers. Um, uh, that's one of the, the, the benefits of supporting us. Um, it's not really something that affects the game necessarily, but the, I mean, you, you can have additional uh, slots and um, that really just, you're still limited to the number of hours in the day, um, which re re really affects what you can effectively get done. Um, the idea is that everything is, is connected in a way that's um, super easy to use and uh, kind of just seamless. I'll add on to that. We have everything running on seasons. So since we're playing on a global uh, scale with players from all countries, I mean, we have maybe 400 members on our Discord right now at the time of this video. Um, we're covering all the time zones. So we have a bot that will automatically sync up season's time with a real life time zone for every server. And the person that has sponsored that server gets to pick uh, the time zone. So we have time zones in Eastern Europe. We have time zones in the Pacific of the US. We got Eastern time zones all over the place. And we've chosen three day seasons so players have a staggered opportunity to do all kinds of work on every server. So every four servers, we have a spring server, a summer server, an autumn server, and a winter server. So that way, there's always something to do. If you want to go work on your buddy's farm who's on server 20 uh, and you're on server 16, you guys would be sharing a cycle because it's every four. But if you're on 20 and 21, those will be staggered. So plenty of work going around. You can always hire anybody you want to do some work and contract them out. You can pay them because they can transfer money anywhere. So it's a really connected economy. That's really cool. That's awesome. <laughs> That's, I, again, I knew, I knew this would happen going through the interview with you guys is that I would learn even more about this, which is super cool. Um, so kind of, I want to talk a little bit more about how you talked about, so you can, you can transfer vehicles, you can transfer money. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about transferring vehicles and money between servers? Yeah, so the mod we have has basically assigned a unique value to every vehicle in the game. And when you buy a vehicle, it immediately has an ID. Think of it like a VIN number that comes on your car or your tractor in real life. As soon as that VIN number is assigned, it follows that vehicle for the life of it. Uh, every single farm will have their own vehicles on every map and at any time, using our Discord bot, which is integrated directly with the mod on all of our servers on the back end stuff that Phil set up, it's all the private secret sauce. <laughs> uh, you can basically say, hey, I want to transfer this tractor with the ID of A1, let's say tractor A1 from server 15 to server 7. You can transfer that. We have a, a specific fee associated with transfers, so it's not something that can be game breaking by moving things around wherever you want. But if you want to run a spraying business and you have a huge Rubicon 9000 and you want to send that to another server, contract out some work, you can do that. If you have a huge harvester and you need someone uh, to run it on another server for you, you can send them your equipment and they can run it. So you can transfer it. There's some fees involved. So like transport costs, just like it would be in real life. But that's one of the best parts. All these transfers are automated. They're instantaneous. There's no waiting around. Uh, and it creates a really cool used economy. So these new farmers can buy some used equipment for maybe cheaper at cost. We'll be integrating player dealerships soon. So there'll be a dealership server with physical assets. You can go walk around and see all the stuff that's available. It's going to be awesome. With the pay-to-win environment that, that that's going on, um, it's actual in-game money that you're paying to transfer these things. It's not real-life money. And then I think also we forgot to mention that you can transfer crops too. Um, yep. You can transfer almost every crop between servers as well. Uh, there's also a transfer fee associated with that, which is the percentage of how much it's worth, basically. Um, but that um, that allows you to transfer almost everything. The, the only exception really is cotton and like eggs and weird stuff like that. That's kind of hard to logis logistically handle. Um, but that, all that's instantaneous as well. So uh, the main things we have that are instantaneous are money, vehicles, and crops. And we're looking, always looking to add new features, um, just really cool stuff. Um, because we, we, we have the infrastructure set up, and adding new stuff really isn't too difficult. That's awesome. And that, that was a good point, too, Phil, that you mentioned. I, was gonna, I, knew, that, I knew that it wasn't real money that you used to transfer. That was going to be my follow-up question, so I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah, that that's absolutely not any. Again, this isn't something that they're they're doing to try to rob you of every penny you have. This is all free to join this and do this. Um, but I still would encourage you guys to join them on Patreon to be able to support them, especially as cool as this is. Especially if you want to guys or you guys want to get really into this. So, uh, super awesome. 
Um, and again, you mentioned everyone gets their own farm. Um, as far as land goes, uh, can you talk to me a little bit about that? Is there any rules for what you're able to buy or own on a farm or anything like, or on a map, I guess I should say, or a server or anything like that? Yeah, land is indexed. We have IDs for every single property on every single server already identified. We've gone ahead and found a way to kind of script the pictures of all those so they're identified on our wiki. So our wiki's public. You can go to it right now to our servers page, and you can take a look at all the servers, and you'll see the cost of all these. You'll see the parcel acreage. You'll see the field acreage. Uh, you'll see the potential owner and all that. That's all available. Uh, so basically, the way we introduce land is when you first start your farm, you get a one-time opportunity to buy whatever you want within a certain um, monetary amount that you'll have to earn money via contracting. But once you have that, you'll be stuck acquiring land through players directly or through an automated auction system. Every uh, summer one, I believe, on every map will randomly draw from a pool of available parcels on every map and they'll be posted and everybody will have an opportunity to bid auction style for those parcels. So it's a really cool way to introduce new land, uh, make it competitive, but make it random because we didn't necessarily want people to buy up everything as soon as they had the money for it. It would just spread like wildfire, be really hard to control. So this random auction or player player uh, interaction is kind of the best bet there. And then also we control the, uh, the selling of the land as well. So uh, you can't necessarily just get rid of a piece of land and get your NPC uh, price back. Uh, the idea is that you uh, have to try to sell it to a player first. If you can't sell it to another player, then you get a portion of the NPC value back as well. And since I'm the automation guy, I think we forgot to, to mention something. Whenever you do become a farm manager, everything from the farm creation to the land assignment is all done via Discord for the admins. So uh, whenever that happens, it, it, you don't have to wait on staff members necessarily to, to handle that for you. I mean, there is a little bit of, of, of staff work that's done, but it's all via Discord. They don't have to log in to do anything. And whenever you log in and join your farm for the first time, you automatically get farm manager. So that's uh, something that's handled automatically. And if you are the only farm manager on your farm and you accidentally leave it, you can also get farm manager back automatically as well. So that's a really nice feature that we have. That's way cooler than I thought it would ever have been. <laughs> um, <laughs> having your own mod. We've yeah. disabled the ability to sleep. We've disabled the ability to take in-game loans. We've transitioned those to uh, Discord web loans. We can talk about that later. We've disabled you the ability hire to workers. buy and sell. You can't hire workers. Yeah, so not only are these just rules, but we've disabled those functions of the game using some mod because it's all scripted. Giants did a really good job about making everything really compatible for uh, modders to go in and do what they want with the game. So they've given us a blank slate. We've been able to do a lot with that. All right. And then just another question. So you talked a little bit about uh, stuff behind the scenes with finances. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah. So as we alluded to earlier, um, the, the in-game loans have been disabled. In their place, we actually have a variable interest rate uh, loan that acts very similar to the in-game loan. And um, it's affected by uh, basically debt to asset ratio, uh, both the APR as well as how much you can uh, borrow are affected by how much you own, essentially. Um, and we haven't integrated it yet, but we're also going to be integrating um, income as well because we can get all this information from the game. So however much income that you make in the game is actually going to affect how much loan you have available. Um, but essentially, it's kind of like uh, how a certain percentage of how the value of your land and the value of your assets is used to determine how much loan you can take out. So instead of being a, a fixed uh, 500,000, uh, I forget the exact percentage, we'll just say it's 75%. If you own, let's say a million dollars worth of land, you have a $750,000 loan that you can take out. Um, additionally, um, we have uh, an outside of the game checking account as well as a savings account. Uh, the checking account and savings account are basically just an extra place to to store stuff, and that's kind of the interme intermediary place um, for when you take money out of the game. That's where it goes to until you can put it into another server. You also use a checking account to pay for your uh, your loan that you're taking out as well. If you have a YouTube channel or a Twitch channel, are you allowed to record or stream what you're doing on your guys' servers? For sure. Yeah, we welcome all that. There's a few people that are on the server that do that. I don't think there's uh, any big names yet. I know a lot of 
creators have busy schedules, but yeah, if they want to play and they can jump on the three day real time seasons, they're more than welcome to play. Um, another question. Uh, is there any other ways to make money other than just farming? Yeah. So with that checking account that Phil was talking about, uh, have a lot of creative ways to make money. So I talked about you could run a harvesting business or a contracting business. Uh, you could run animals. You can do all that. You can do everything in game that you've been able to do. But we also want to develop some managed businesses to where a player can act as a player dealership. Dealerships are hopefully being released this weekend. So that might actually be before this video goes live. Uh, that'll be a place for players to interact with other players and hopefully in the long run replace the in-game store because the deals are so good that you want to buy from a player uh, there'll be a case dealer a john deere dealer new holland dealer you name it there'll be someone who has a discount making it better than in-game to go interact with the real player and we'll have a dealership server with a physical building these assets are being imported from a bunch of maps we're making it right now it's going to be like you're walking into a real dealership you can go test drive things take it out to the field get a feel for it you can uh, create lease uh, agreements if you want to work out something with that dealership. And that'll be really cool for used equipment as well. So right now, players can settle players directly, as mentioned. But there'll be a, a lot of used equipment on these lots that you can go check out, maybe get a good deal on. Eventually, we'll have a banker role that'll kind of improve the existing loan functionality. So there's actually a person behind the decision. Uh, a lot of times, there's there'll be collateral involved, um, your income or payment history, your down payment, whatever. All that will be taken care of. We'll make real estate agent roles. We'll make a crop agent role. So a crop agent would be like a broker who you can sell your crop to immediately to help offload and they can get contracts to fulfill. So super awesome. Everything we want to do has to have a physical or rather virtual counterpart in game or a person behind the wheel. We don't want things to be meta gaming. We don't want these random assets being thrown around in Discord that you never see. We don't want all these things like that. So we'll make production facilities like a sugar factory for developing sugarcane, similar to what a BGA would do in base game, stuff like that. But yeah, it's really a blank slate and uh, everyone that's playing with us can contribute. We have ways to make suggestions. We have quite a large mod list but if you make mods i'd love to have some of your equipment that's awesome what you guys have accomplished with this and i'm super excited to see where you guys take it in the future especially with all the the businesses stuff coming along that sounds actually really awesome so it makes me uh it makes me wish i had far more time in the day uh because <laughs> because i really want to get involved if i could but we'll see someday maybe i hope i'll have more time but if you guys enjoyed this, again, drop a like down below. These guys have worked super hard on this. This is super cool what they have going on. Make sure you guys check them out. All the relevant links you'll find down below in the description. Uh, in addition to that, if you guys want to win a copy of Farming Simulator 22, a digital download from Giants, make sure you guys comment giveaway down below in the comments. That way you guys will get entered to win that. And I will announce a winner for that exactly uh, or approximately one week after this video posts. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. And that'll be announced on the Farmer Cop community page. Uh, but yeah, any final notes that you guys have, uh, Drew or Phil, before we wrap things up? I'd say definitely come check us out uh, if you are looking for a place to play multiplayer. Um, like it's been mentioned a million times before, we're not paid to win. It's completely free to play. And uh, you only donate to us if you want to. And by donating to us, you don't really get any perks. I mean, you just you help us maintain the servers so that we can continue to run another day. Uh, having dedicated servers is not cheap, and uh, our sponsors are how we keep running. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, glad we got to share this. Uh, hopefully, we can get some new players off this video because it's the more the merrier. I mean, having more players on the fields is just going to be awesome. We're looking forward to FS22 and and beyond. Thanks for watching. All right, guys, thank you guys for coming and watching today. If you guys enjoyed, drop a like down below. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button up on the screen to join the Farmer Cop channel and turn on your notification bell so you don't miss another future farming simulator video. This has been Farmer Cop. Thank you guys for coming and watching.